bins. They're not the nicest looking things, let's hide them. In this one, I'm gonna show you how you can make your very own bin store and hopefully save a bit of money in the process. Well, hold on, hold on, I've gotta stop you there. A little word from Joe in the future. As you can see, the bin store's done, so you've got a bit of a sneak peek. But if you've been looking at timber prices recently, this project was made in August, 2021, and the prices are a little bit over the place, but not only the prices, even sourcing the timber has been a real struggle for this. So this has ended up costing over twice as much as I expected it to. So the one I made, probably isn't on a budget but i'm hoping in the future you can follow these steps and you will be able to save a fortune with this honestly because building one should be a lot cheaper than buying one so before we make a start on the bin store itself we've got to get some decent measurements and we need three measurements to be able to determine how big each compartment needs to be to the bin store the first one i'm going to get is how wide is the bin now bins can be really awkward shapes, so it's worth getting a few measurements just to see what is the widest point. At a glance, it appears to be the front at the top to the bin. And we're looking at about 60 centimetres wide. This is a very rough measurement. We will be adding on some wiggle room, but let's just double check that it's not wider than that at any point. Seems to be good. So 60 centimetres wide should fit this bin. Now let's have a look at how deep the bin is. And we're looking about 75. Again, we'll need to add on some wiggle room, but at the minute we've got 60 centimetres wide, 75 centimetres deep. Now we need to get how tall the bin is. And we're at about 107 centimetres. So it's just over a metre tall. So get those measurements sorted and then we can crack on with the build. So I've gone ahead and I've done the simple straight cuts to get me started. I just used a handsaw for this and I've laid out the beginnings of a side frame to the bin store. I'm using four and a half centimetre square wood. Wood prices are a little bit awkward at the moment, so I do shop around, try and find the best price you can. The bottom piece that you can see here, this will actually be the depth of the bin store and the middle piece is 75 centimetres long. And then on the outside of that, I've got a back piece and a front piece. Now the back piece I've cut to 125 centimetres long and the front piece I've cut it to 117 centimetres long. That gives me enough wiggle room to get the bin in and out and it also adds a little bit of a taper to the front. Don't need to do this, it could be perfectly square if you want, I just think it'll look nicer that way. I haven't got a measurement yet for the top piece though. So because we've got a taper to the top, it's a bit awkward finding out what the measurement needs to be. I'm sure it could be done with maths, but who's got time for that? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the size at the bottom from front to back. We're roughly around 84 centimetres. It's close enough for me. I'm gonna make sure that the top pieces are also spread apart to that 84 centimetre mark. And now what I can do is take one of the pieces of still four and a half by four and a half centimetre thick wood, and I'm gonna offer it up and make sure we're hitting the corners basically and we'll be able to use this as a guide for where we actually need to cut and hopefully those pieces will fit i think that should work okay now i'm going to get this frame actually secured together i'll be putting two screws at each corner and that'll be plenty strong enough to hold this together So this is the first of the side frames I've got put together. As you can see, it's got a very slight taper to it, but you don't have to worry about doing that. This is just the design element. That could be perfectly flat if you like. You haven't got to worry about making any kind of roof or waterproofing it in any way because the bins are outside in all elements, so that doesn't really matter. It really is just a design choice. So we've got this as one side, and I have made a duplicate of that frame for another side. And these are actually going to be the outer ends and now will get joined with a long piece of timber on the bottom at the back and at the top at the back i've got a bit ahead of myself again i oh know i'm sorry but this is to make sure that the two sides are standing upright it's a little bit awkward to get the bottom piece in place but now it's in place i've got two screws joining it at the bottom just behind me and at the minute i've only got one screw holding it at the front so i'll get another screw added to this one then I just need to get the other cross piece connected from top on either side. Now the measurement for this will obviously differ depending on your bins, but I've gone for two meters, five centimeters. That should give me a 65 centimeter opening for each of the three bins. And that should also allow for five centimeter wide partitions going in between. It's actually four and a half centimeters because that's how thick the wood is, but five centimeters is near enough. To help drive the screws through to hold the cross section at the top, I'm going to pre-drill a couple of holes. 
As you can see, we've already got a couple of screws in place, which is holding the side frame together. So I need to avoid these screws. Now I've got the bottom piece in place and I've got the top piece in place at the back. We'll think about the front a bit later on. I'm gonna mark out where we're gonna have the dividers. I'm gonna have two dividers, which will create three compartments for three bins. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna make the compartments 65 centimeters wide, but of course, adjust this measurement to actually fit your bins. With any luck, this middle piece should measure 65, which it does, thankfully. I can do the same to the bottom piece now. To make it easier, to attach the centre dividers. I'm gonna flip this onto its front. That way I'll be able to apply the screws with it facing down. The middle dividers are almost the same as the two side panels. But as you can see, the big difference is it's missing the piece at the back. That's because the top and bottom piece are gonna be connected to this top and bottom rail that spans the full length of the actual structure. We'll be putting a filler piece to fill in the back a bit later on. But for now, I'll get this into place, line it up with the marks that I measured just, and then I'll get it secured with a couple of screws at top and bottom. So I've got the frame lying on its back now, and we need to come up with a way to join the top pieces just to make it rigid and to stop the internal pieces from flapping around. It'll also make sure that the gap is equal between all the three sections. So I've stood the frame back upright, and now it's the moment of truth. Will a bin actually fit inside? Perfect. So next up is the construction on the doors. And for the construction, I went down the same route as I did for the rest of the frame. Just a couple of screws in each of the corners. It was the exact same construction as well for the lids. These are obviously a little bit different in sizes. For the cladding, I've got 50 millimeter wide by 25 millimeter thick boards, and these are just gonna get nailed into place. Now you can use the old fashioned hammering nails, but I'm gonna speed it up a bit with a nail gun. Of course, if you've never used a tool like this before, don't feel like you have to, it just speeds up the job. But if you are gonna use one, please make sure you take all the safety precautions. So I've got one of the doors laid down on the floor now and I'm gonna attach a T-hinge. Now you've probably seen these hinges on the likes of gates and shed doors, so it's gonna be ideal for this application. I'm gonna attach it to the third cladding piece down from the top. I'm just gonna get it centered and flushed up against the edge and then we can get it secured in place with some screws. Now I can add a second one to the third from bottom piece. So I've got the door wrong, but it won't open. It's really tight at the top, really open at the bottom. And what this has basically done, because of the weight of the door, it's splaying the leg out. Now I did hope that I wouldn't have had this issue and just the weight alone would have held the front legs in place. But it means that I'm gonna to have to put a strip on the bottom just to tie the fronts together, similar to what we've got at the back. It does mean that there's gonna be a bit of a lip that you've got to wheel the bin over but it's not going to be too thick. I'm actually going to be using the cladding just to work as that front strip. So it'll work, it's not ideal, but I haven't really got any choice. So I went ahead and I got the hinges put back on. Now it's got the batten along the bottom. It shouldn't have dropped as much and I can see already it's swinging nice and free. And that's one working door. We'll be adding the latch, but I'll do that a little bit later. I can get the other doors put on now. With the doors on, I can turn my attention to the lids now. Mm -hmm. 
Now you're probably thinking, when you lift up this lid, you're gonna then have to reach in to lift up the bin lid as well, just to put rubbish in, but that's not the case. This one at least was nice and easy. On the black bin, we've got two handles. So all I needed to do was thread through a piece of chain and attach it to a couple of hooks in the top of the wooden lid. So now when I open the wooden lid, the bin lid opens as well. When I shut it, so does the bin lid. Now with our other two bins, it's a little bit more awkward because we haven't got any through handles. Instead, there's just a couple of lips on either side and one at the front. There's no easy way to attach the chain. So all I'm gonna do is stick on some of these command hooks. Now you can get lots of different styles, but this one actually has a pivot to the hook, which I think is gonna be ideal for this application. I'm just gonna stick it on to the corner, one on each corner at the front, and then the chain will be able to hook onto those. Now this timber will need some kind of wood preserver painted onto it, but we've still not settled on the color yet. So for now, this will do. So that's the bin store done. I think you'll agree, it's a vast improvement just over the bins being out in the open. I think this is gonna look a lot nicer in the garden, but there's probably one more thing that you're thinking I might have missed. What if you wanna keep the bin lid open for a while, if you've got quite a lot of stuff that you're gonna be throwing away? Well, I've already thought of that. Some might say that it's the lazy option, but I prefer the elegant solution. I'm literally gonna be using an off-cut piece of the cladding to just prop the lid open. So now if we've got lots of stuff to throw away, lid's open for me. You can throw it away when I'm done. Just remove the stick, job done. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the little bell icon next to it. That way you'll get a notification as soon as you upload a new video. Thank you all for watching.